everyone, thank you once again for tuning in to year three of the Iconist podcast. What? We are still here, still going, still strong. And thank you once again for all your support. That being said, we have mm. to do a couple of things. First of all, we're happy that it's year three. I'm one of your hosts, Barry 3D. You know the joke at three years in. Hey, sprinkles. sprinkles. I got to put some flavor on it. It's flavor on got it, it. Man. Right, got it. and always, as always, the man who joins me all the time, my best friend, the man, the myth, the legend, the one that makes the sound shake and booties quiver, the one and only mm. Rod C. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode. Uh, we have some fun for you today. As I always say, the icon is. I'm not saying a word. I'm not saying a word. Oh, well, anyone that's watching and sees what I'm wearing, you know, might give a slight hint, but we don't know. But it's gonna, you're still gonna be off. But anyway, before we get that, we got to turn around and do a round table. We got to thank the people and help the, the you know, help out and support this show. So first and foremost, mm. uh, if you gotta go anywhere, you gotta support the books because that's what gives us topics to talk about, right? First and foremost, mm. if you're out in the kitchen or check out Wow Comics along with our boys. Wes, Ramon, Sydney, and Chris. Tell them you heard about them on the Iconist podcast and tell them we said hello. Manners. Right. Make Round two. Matter. Make manners, make <laughs> it the man. Round two. For all our friends out in Montreal, please go and check out Check Swings Sports, you know, Check Wings, Check Swings Sports Cards. Now they just don't do sports cards, they do comic books also. That's why we talk about on the show. And go and say uh, say hello to Trevor, Dom, Pierre, and Pierre. Tell them you heard about them on the Iconist podcast, and we said hello. Both of these locations will hook you up. And as I like to say, if you have a favorite comic book store in your region, send us a picture of you at your favorite comic book store. It's just send it over to us. That's all it is. You know, Tag us, put it in there, let us know. We want to see what store where you buy your books at. And I'm not talking just Canada. I'm not talking U.S. I'm talking worldwide i would love to see what a comic book store looks like in australia or in uk or in scotland or ireland i know people download this show all over facts, facts. come on now come on we want to see know. you know and we know there's differences between you know what the books are how they're presented here in north america than how they are presented in the uk for example right there's slight differences all right let's go perfect mm -hmm. i was watching too much street fighter um, on top of that, please, you know, another person that supports the show is Miss Brandy Ford. You can check her out at 4680q.com. That's her radio show that she's on Mondays and Wednesdays at two o'clock on both those days and Saturdays at noon. And she also has her magazine that she does monthly called The Writer and the Wit. The link is down below. Please support. Show the love there. Can't go wrong. On top of that, I do stand up comedy. And there's times mm. when I'm doing it alone and you want to see what I'm doing. You go to Barry3D.com. It talks about this show, all my tour dates, anything I have coming up. And I have a blog that I update. So you can always kind of get a little bit insight of where I'm at and where I'm going to be. So keep an eye on that. Make, you know, put that in your favorites on your, your, your page and keep it going. Anything I'm going to do, it's always there. Now, when I'm not alone, I do it also with my comedy troupe, the comedy I'm talking about, right? And the comedy troupe I'm a part of is called A Touch of Gray Matter. That's myself. Dave Sokolowski and Zolf Ali. So the three of us go around and we do a lot of fundraisers and we do a lot of live shows. So come out, check out support. We got some coming up. So keep your eyes open, your eye and your sorry, your eyes peeled and your ears open. <laughs> All right, I need a Red Bull. It's for stepping. Number one. Even though I'm a Lewis Hamilton fan. All right, don't hate me. Don't hate me. It's all good. <laughs> That's right. That's my F1 knowledge. There's a lot of it. I was a fan before Netflix Drive to Survive, okay? Got you, okay. Now, yeah. last but not least, if you want to turn around and do something like what we're doing right now, everyone has a voice and you can turn around and be inspirational. You can be funny. You can be witty. You can be ever, whatever you want your on-air persona to be. You need to do a podcast. And if you want to do a podcast, you should use what we use, and that is podbean.com. So if you go to iconist.podbean.com, you'll see all our past episodes there, and you can do it too. And if you're doing that, you're going to need some art. You're going to need a logo. You're going to need maybe some templates. You're going to need whatever graphic design material. And you need to go to our secret weapon. What's that? The one and only. What are we talking about, Rod? Jay Bird Digital Art. 
Jason Reese, Mr. Jaybird Digital Art. You can see all his, his poster right now and his contact information. Mm. You reach out to him. You tell him you heard about him on the Iconist podcast, and he will give you a discount. Save them dollars, ducats, yen, you know, uh, I, I don't know, yeah. whatever, r- r- ruples, I, 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 you know what I mean? I'm, you, I don't know. If you use gold bricks, ducats, I don't know if you use matchsticks. Funds, save yes. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you use is currency. <laughs> but you probably got to get it transferred into, you know, currency for he can use it. He, can't buy food with matchsticks. Okay, cool. <laughs> you know, but pounds and dollars. Okay, we good. All right. So that is the round table right there, which brings mm. us to the episode you are listening to today. Mm. Sometimes we gotta go with the, the, the unknown. Sometimes you go with the known, and maybe they need to have a little bit more known about them. Day, we are talking about who. Who who are we talking about, Rod? We'll be talking about the Blue Falcon. In hmm. Dynamite. Ah! We are focusing. Everyone <laughs> knows about Dynamite, but we're really going to focus on the Blue Falcon. Woo! Heck yeah. The Blue Falcon. He, so he was a, it was a cartoon that came out, Dynamite, you know, uh, Dynamite Dog Wonder. And this was created by Hanna-Barbera back in 1976. Ran from and on and aired on ABC in from 1976 in September, uh, for a full year to 1977. And now he was, even though he was the sidekick, they made him more the focal point. But we're going with the Blue Falcon. The Blue Falcon was underrated, so he was created by William Hanna and Joseph Barbera. Henceforth, for those who are watching my hoodie, that's right, you can see it right here. Even though he's not on here, it's a Hanna Barbera hoodie. Represent. I've had this for years. Represent. Represent. I've had this for years. 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 Okay. I've had this so long. My daughter's starting to wear it right now. Okay. It's a little bit snug on me. Mm. Well, <laughs> don't judge your brother. Don't judge your brother. So, this show, as I said, was created by the famous group, you know, Hannah Barbera. So, if anyone thinks about that, you're thinking about your. You know, your Space Ghost and your Herculoids and your Flintstones and Scooby-Doo and Blue right. Falcon, right, has made a lot of appearances. Scooby-Doo and Dino, sorry, uh, Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt have made a lot of appearance on Scooby-Doo with the Mystery Ink Gang multiple times. And he's been here, there and everywhere. So, yes, he ran for pretty much two years. So, yes, yeah, so there's two seasons of the... Blue, you know, Dynamite and Blue Falcon. We're just gonna say Blue Falcon for the rest of the episode. You know, Dynamite's included, but this is where we're focusing right. on. So, you know, Blue Falcon ran for two seasons from 1976 um, on ABC. Then, you know, the show started off giving like half an hour segments. And then the show broke down the quarter segments, and then they would put other things in there because it was teamed up. You know, it was shown as the the Dynamite Scooby Doo Hour, and mm-hmm. this is how they used to play it. And then when that kind of went off the air. Blue Falcon came back in the Laugh Olympics, which was, you know, Network Battle of the Stars. If you know the show, that. you forgot about that, eh? Yeah, see, see? See? If you know the show, that's the show. Forget reality TV for a minute. We're gonna deviate for half a second. Network oh Battle of the gosh. Stars was a was a TV show, literally what it was it was. You took all your network stars from different, you know, be it if it's ABC, NBC, CBS whatever and they got them together from all the people from popular shows and then made teams to compete against each other you know all in fun this is a time where you could see the actors and actresses just kind of be themselves not be the characters now keep in mind this is before social media so they would do Mm -hmm. volleyball and and kayaking competitions and they would trash talk amongst each other but all in good natured fun so you would see Mm -hmm. the you know henry winkler who played the fawns on one team and then linda carter who played wonder woman on another team and just hanging out for the day. They would get like a park stadium and, and do it all there. So this is where yes. the Laugh Olympics took the same concept and did it with all their stars from Hanna-Barbera and put them on teams. And you always had that one team, the Dastard Leads, who would, you know, would always cheat. There's always must be one. There's always one. There's oh, my gosh. always one. You know, Scooby-Doo oh. was a team captain and it goes on. So this is where they came back. So, you know, and they would wear shirts because so they have their uniforms on. So 
Blue Falcon would have his Blue Falcon outfit on, and then you have like the team T-shirt over it. Memories. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, with that, he's that character is kind of come and gone onto different things. So, mm-hmm. as I said, his own show, then Laugh Olympics, then the character showed up later on on a Scooby Doo episode where they kind of got into his origin. We'll talk about that in a minute. Then there was a couple of more crossovers, and then there was a movie Scoob, the 3D animated movie that went to the cinema, which brought in the Blue Falcon. Did they? No. You might say yes, Barry, but I'm telling you no. It wasn't the original Blue Falcon. They brought in his son. <sighs> right. You you heard he mentioned about the, the original, but it was you mm-hmm. find it's his son later on who kind of dated the look of the, the you know the play and everything. So that's cool. So let's let's take it back to the beginning. So I said 1976, 20 episodes, Blue Falcon Dino Mutt, here we are. Now, the thing is with at the time, they used to make these characters and never gave them an origin. You would see their backstory. You would see who their villains are, and it would be, go. And it's like when they right. created Wolverine. They created Wolverine, gave him no backstory. They just said, Roman. here he is. He's Canadian, Roman. eh? And that was it. Hey. Hey. That was it. They weren't even sure if his claws were retractable or part of the gloves. At first, they were saying the claws were part of the gloves and not retractable into his body. That came way later. So once again, as we like to say, there's a lot of meat on the bone. Mm. And and they never really clarified his origin. And this is what made me want to talk about Blue Falcon today. Because I there's been hints at his origin. And like usual, it's been retconned here and there. And when you look at it, I'm like, why is it getting retconned? And I'm like, oh, it fell underneath the DC umbrella. There was a comic book way back that really was more off from the TV show, but it was, you know, under that, that umbrella, that that's, that's the way it came down to be. Um, and, and they retconned it. So hold on, Rod, do you know anything about the blue Falcon, the original one we're talking about his origin? Yes. So the, the original that I do know is basically is from the Scooby-Doo era. That's really where you get your, at least that's where I got my connection from him. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, the Dynamut Scoob Hour, that's where, you know, I was first introduced to it and yeah, it, it's, it's, it was always what I was always, what I always liked about it. And we'll get, we'll get into it a little bit more definitely. But I, what I always liked was the, 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 the yin and yang of how serious Blue Falcon was. And then there's Dynamut. Blue Falcon is trying to take care of a mystery. He's trying to do something serious and whatever. Yep. Hit dynamite. It's it was always hilarious. You see in the yin and yang of, of of their the way they they wrote the character to be you know um you know we're 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 superheroes you know we're here to you know solve crime and do whatever. It's being serious and then Dynamite does something that's just completely like like a Scooby. So I always took it that Dynamite was the what if Scooby Doo really had was um was really, you know, he's already clumsy already. But what if he had, you know, the go-go gadget, you know, Inspector Gadget type of uh, arsenal underneath his his collar and in his hand, in his gloves? I mean, yeah. So I always I always like the fact that when we had, when you when you talk about Blue Falcon, I and mean, whenever he comes on, I mean, it was always just the, the parody. It's the campiness about it. And that's what I always remember about him. Right. See, and that's exactly what they aimed the show because they took that campiness because they were influenced by Batman. That's the Adam West, Burt Ward era where it had them yep. well done in the costumes and the, and the series, but it had a campiness to it. And that just translated over because they were aiming, trying to get that same market. So that's how they're doing it. You know, you got, you got your copies and everything, as I said, comes full, full circle. circle. Mm-hmm. So when I say about the origin, so the origin of the character, he, he the origin of Blue Falcon, his name was Randall Crown. Right, which is established. He's a and now this is where it gets interesting. And this is where I, I start coming up with my own theories, how it can come up. Maybe. So he's like Randall Crown. That's that's uh, you know, Randall, Randall, yeah, Randall Crown. And he uh-huh. owns a art, he's an art trader, he's an art, has an art exhibit 
you know, a curator. So he has his own store selling crisis art. That's what he does by day. He lives in a mm-hmm. penthouse in the big city. That, that's exactly what it's called, the big city. That's where they're stationed. Okay. He lives in a penthouse right on the top, like the Jeffersons. Moving on up. He has his faithful dog, you know, Dynamite, who's there and and he and Dynamite's his best friend. That's all we know about the character. Now, here's where we get a little bit different, and here it's gonna come in. As I said, we never got an official origin, but throughout the years, from 1976 up to now, 2023, we've had touches of an origin. So, and there's some I liked, some that I like the aspects of. So here we go. One, the original origin that I heard at first, and I saw you could see online, was Randall was working as a security guard. Yes. Right? And then, um, you know, the, where he was guarding, got attacked. He was there with his dog, Mutt. The dog got injured. He got injured. And to save the dog, they implemented robotics. <laughs> Nanotechnology. That, 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 that. So I get he's now a security guard. So he had nothing to do with working or owning a art store. Or, or dealer. Yeah, yeah, he was a... Uh... Yeah, art dealer. Yeah, nothing okay. to do with that. Yeah, art dealer. Yeah, nothing to do with it. He was just a security guard. This is what happened. His dog almost died. It was traumatic for him. They saved the dog. They were able to make the dog better, like the $6 million man. I was about to say, now, yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We can rebuild him. We can, we can rebuild, rebuild him. him. <laughs> now, I, I, you know, so that's one. And, I'll, and I'll, there's more to that story. I'll come back to it for half a second. Now, if you go, DC Comics got the license for Hanna Barbera a few years ago and they did a big crossover. So, one, they did a 12 issue series. Uh, uh, Hanna Barbera, I can't remember. It was like a, it was a Future State, and they brought in all the characters together. Or Future Quest, that was it. Future Quest, that's it. Uh, it was a twelve issue mini uh, maxi series, Future Quest by DC Comics. They brought all the characters in, you know, to fight this whatever evil coming up. So you got Space Ghost, you got Blue Falcon, you got Dynamite, you got Johnny Quest, and, and you know all the superhero action. You got Mitor. Uh, all the action heroes would show up. To deal with this Frankenstein Jr., which was a giant robot. And and they kind of touched on it there. And here's where it is with the origin. So this is why I said I had to go back and forth. So when now DC's gone into it. So the origin where he's the security officer and Dynamite gets injured, there is one where it's Quest Industries. You find out he's the he's a security guard at Quest Industries, which is Johnny Quest, Benton Quest. Okay, Mm -hmm. and Benton Quest saying, oh, my gosh, you almost lost your dog. You you got injured, you know, and the lab got attacked. You did what you could do, but your dog got injured. I understand about losing your dog. My son Johnny has a dog, Bandit. We can't let Dynamite go. I'm going to use my technology and fix him, but make him better, you know, and, and made him like a bionic dog. So I like that part of the origin. Because it now connects world, you know, about world building. So this connects the world of Hanna Barbera together. So you're bringing in now Johnny Quest and that team. So that's Johnny Quest, Race, Bennington, and Haji with uh, their dog Bandit, with now Blue Falcon and Dynamite connections. All right, and then they go on. He does what he has to do. How did he become the working in the you know art curator? curator? I don't know. They never mention it, but I got theories. Then, of course, DC took it a step further after that and said, oh, we're going to make him a part of Batman Inc. Blue Falcon is a part of Batman Inc. So if you read Super Sons, DC Super Sons Special Number One, it's one called Super Sons Special uh, Dynamite, because they did these one-off crossovers of all their characters. So you have Space Ghost that teamed up with Green Lantern. So you got, you know, Damian Wayne and Don Kent as like, you know, just 12, pre-teenage, you know, pre-teens or or tweens or or pre-tweens or tween and teenagers at that age. And they see, you know, John Kent at a funeral with his parents, with Lois and Clark. He hears Mm -hmm. someone, he goes outside to get some air. He hears a voice. He looks up. It's, you know, Damian Wayne, which is Robin saying, hey, man, what are you doing? Let's let's leave. This is boring. He's like, you took me down? He's like, uh, world's greatest detective what did you not know yeah come on man you're my best friend let's go and do something this place is boring and he's like oh no i can't go i can't go my my, my dad would be pissed if i take off 
right? I'll get the speech from my mom and dad about responsibility and I can't go, uh, Damon, I got to stay. And then all of a sudden you hear in the background, there's a noise that, you know, John reacts to and both, both, let's say, you know, let's say Superman Jr. and, and Robin turn around and react to it. And you see it's dynamite, but he's like damaged. And he's reaching out to him. He's trying to speak. And Robin right away, Damian Wayne, recognizes him as, hey, that's dynamite. But hey, man, wh wh where's your best friend? It's And he comes out that, you know, there was a villain from Blue Falcon's past that came out, got revenge. This villain was called the Vulture. So, and it gets into the origin. And the origin is literally, you had Randall, who's now a genius in this world. He created the nanotechnology. He never wanted to leave his lab when he was a teenager. Like he was 12 years old and his parents had money and he never wanted to leave his homemade lab that he was doing. So his dad got him a, pup, a, a puppy that he called Mutt. And that Mutt turned out to be his best friend. And when Mutt was dying because of natural old age, this is now, you know, 20 years later, he's a grown man. His parents uh, passed away. They were killed. They didn't say about what. He didn't want to let his best friend go because that's how he looked at, at Mutt. That's what he called him. He used the nanotechnology that he was developing all over those years to make a, a kind of a, put it in mutt, save him, make him a cyborg so he would never die, so he would never lose his best friend. And that's right. where it starts, the adventures of Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt. And that's the DC version. And then he joins Batman Inc. When Batman made a organization around the world with all people that were similar to him to okay. fight crime. So he's part of that Batman Inc. family. Because he had that training, but he's a you know he's a genius. So they cut out the Johnny Quest aspect and made it that he made the technology, but he never wanted to get rich off the technology. So he didn't need to be an art dealer either because he was uber rich. So ah, and then during that story, you find out that Blue Falcon is taken over by this guy who was called the uh, the Red Vulture, and you realize that the Vulture was a uh, a true Vulture animal. And he used these experiments before on Dynamite. He used it on the Vulture, and the Vulture became self-aware and wanted to put himself from a bird body into a human body. And he took over Blue Falcon to the point where in this story, Blue Falcon does die. But then at the end, Dynamite goes, pulls him out of the grave, takes him back to the headquarters, and uses the same technology that reanimated himself on Blue Falcon, and Blue Falcon lives again. But now he's got that technology in it now how what's that going to do we don't know that's that was one other story <laughs> hmm. not done yet then there's the appearance that blue falcon had on dexter's laboratory yes i saw that i read that up yep yeah with dd my stupid sister mm. where blue falcon shows up at dexter's lab with dynamite in his hands dynamite's dying and dexter says hey He's outdated. He's always goofing up and messing up anyways. I made something better. Dynamite 2.0. 2. This one is better for you. Don't worry about the original one. And and Blue Falcon's like, oh, okay. And they just start working with Dynamite 2.0. He's getting rid of all the crime and stuff like that. And then he goes a little bit crazy. And Blue Falcon and Dexter have to team up to bring him down. Okay, so this is where it gave me vibes. This gave me vibes of, instead of figuring Dynamite 2.0, Let's look at Batman, Bruce Wayne, and then let's look at Azriel when he took over the mantle of the bat, where Bane broke Batman's back. Right. Azriel went on to be Batman, then he changed the costume to this armored thing, and he went really crazy by any crime was, you know, punishable by death, no matter if you're jaywalking or whatever. And that's what Dynamite was doing. And then they had to reactivate the original Dynamite to help fight, take down Dynamite 2.0, along with Blue Falcon. Then he realized his mistake. Yeah, right. So one, yeah, it, 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 you know, some parts, it just works for the story. But overall, no. And then the whole thing with, you know, the Super Suns special with Dino White and Blue Falcon is they made Blue Falcon really, really dark because he's just another Batman character. All right. It's a lot to take in. And I'll get to it in Ooh. half a second, Rod. I know I hit you with a lot of information. What are, what are your feelings on some oh. of these origin stories I was telling you? <laughs> or did so you read yourself? The thing is, well, definitely I do remember seeing the uh, episode with with um, when he was a curator. I remember seeing that, so I knew about that one. Mm. I never did. I never did read the part or come across the one when he was with Dino. I mean, uh, with Dexter. That I admit, I was like when I was doing the research, I'm like thinking, oh. 
I have to go back now and look for that episode, you know, and and catch up on that one. Just you know to be you know be caught up on that one. But yeah. it's uh, the 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 origin story is always something that was interesting because you're right. They never they never we never talk about that. You never know. Back in those days, they just put out a character and that's it. So I'm happy to see that they kind of had some type of story because at least Randall was you know okay he was just security for that art for the art gallery basically so see you know it's you know security and you got your dog with you type of scenario right. and then yeah the dog is injured and he's like oh I, I am my best friend and oh we can rebuild him great and then we become that he's like oh i always wanted to you know fight crime and you know that type of scenario that's what i'm trying to remember right now hmm. if did he, have, did he have amnesia at that point Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm trying to remember if that was the episode where it remains. So, no. He has, um, maybe again, I, it's been a while since I've seen that one. Forgive me. And if anybody, you know, does, you know, can, you know, at least Barry saying that no. So I guess I'm wrong. Eh, eh. But I thought I recall that he had amnesia of some sort. So he couldn't remember maybe. that he was a curator and that he was just basically, you know, when he came out of it, he he just realizing, oh, I'm I'm a superhero in that regard. But again, I'm trying to remember where did I think of that though. But anyway, I'll come oh, back to you're that. Probably, I mean, you're right because I said there were so many different variations of well, it. This is the thing. I'm... They never stuck to original origins, and that's one we'll get into in half a second here. You see the eyes twitching. All right, mm. uh, you know I'm gonna yeah. break it down. Half a second. Twitching, so... twitching, twitching. Uh, so I got theories. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, so. This, that, that, and there's it. There's, because there's not so much of an origin with this character, that means the door is open. Now, let's not make the mistake by making him just a dark version Batman character. Because he's not dark. He's serious, but he's not dark. Where he's, he's serious, Dino Mutt was always the levity of the show, right? But of course, when you watch right. Scoob, you see there's a progression of where Dino Mutt started and to how where he is at the end in that movie with the rest of Mystery Inc. Here we go. Hold on, people. Strap in tight. So first of all, let's break down a couple of things. Here's what I like, and I think if we had a piece together in Origin, this is what would make the most sense for me. One, was he a security guard working at Quest Industries when things went wrong? Sorry, it's I, not a gallery. Yeah, right, right. It's a Quest Industry. Right? So with Johnny Quest, mm -mm. I like this. I don't want him to be the self-contained over super genius. I like the fact that he had to lean on someone to make it. So was he a security guard? Sure. I will go this far back. I will take the origin back to he likes gadgets. All right? I'm good with that. I don't think he's got to be super genius. He likes gadgets. I'm, I'm good enough with him having a little bit of money, having some gadgets. I wouldn't say he's uber rich like Bruce Wayne. No, don't don't give him Bruce Wayne dollars because that's not how I envision a character. I don't want him to be a carbon copy, you know, copy paste of Batman, even mm -hmm. though he does have similarities. So I would say he came up in a, well, I wasn't a multimillionaire, but I would say his parents were, you know, they weren't blue collar. Uh, I'd say his parents were well off, right? Mm -hmm. and, you know, above average living. He had a good childhood. He had the big house. Okay, yes, I'm still with the connection of his dad giving him a P. Maybe he was more of a shy, introvert character kind of doing his own thing. And the dad gave him the puppy, tried to get him outside, do things. And, and I like that because that there shows a connection to why he's so connected to Dino Mutt. Okay. All for that. Um, you know, I don't need his parents to die in a grisly way. Could be just life, age. Right. But be, but at least he's got Dino Mutt there to stop him from, you know, withdrawing from the world outside. Maybe there was a some time of crime. So, you know, we can go with that because usually that's the normal trope for every hero that kind of gets him going. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now maybe he doesn't know what to do with his life. So he's kind of just doing jobs to get by. He he got money from his parents' inheritance that he has there. But because he's more of an introvert character, he's not trying to go and be the playboy. He's not going to be Tony Stark. He's not womanizing. He's not chasing. He doesn't know what to do with his life. It could be a point where, oh, man, I just lost my parents. Um, I got mutt here. Sure, I got some money, but I got to figure something out. And then someone comes up and gives you an easy job. Hey, man, just get yourself out of the house. Why don't you do this at night? Instead of being, you know, you're up all night, maybe you got insomnia, you're still dealing with the trauma of losing your parents. And I'm not saying they went in a traumatic way, but just the fact that you lost your parents. 
okay. And I'm going to bring my dog. Well, I, I don't want to leave my dog with me. My dog gives me, you know, he's my security blanket. Oh, perfect job for you. Then be a security agent. You know what? They're looking here for night security, which is a quiet place. You can bring mutt with you. And the two, you can be security guards walking to premises. How many times you see guards walking with dogs at night? On whatever right. compounds, right? So, hey, you have a dog. And you say, okay, fine. So he goes, he takes a job at Quest Industries. This now ties it together. Why he won't leave Mutt behind? Because his Mutt, you know, and I call him Mutt. So it's not Dino Mutt yet. He's just Mutt because his dog has that connection to his parents. They were given to him by his mom and dad. That's what he has as a memory left. No brothers, no sisters. It's just Mutt. That's his best friend. Got it. While working Quest Industries, yes, let one of let some villain come in and try to steal something from Quest Industries. They did it once a week. <laughs> you know, that was Johnny Quest. Da, na, 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 na. All right, fine. In the aftermath of him trying to do his best, he sees Donald Mutt's injured. He's injured. Okay, now ben, Dr. Benton Quest does have a conscience. He is a good man. He would look at this situation and understand that the importance of having a dog to help you get through things, you know, because there's dogs now for mental health, helping you get through certain aspects in your life, he's going to say, maybe I can do something. Because now he's going to picture his son, Johnny, with Bandit and saying, if something was to happen to Bandit, I would do my best to save Bandit so Johnny would have it easier, emotionally right. and mentally. So he's taking that same energy, looking at this guy and says, maybe he reminds me of a grown up version of an older version of my son, Johnny. And I'm going to help him save his dog. So he takes whatever he does. You know, you know, John Benton Quest is like Reed Richards in the Marvel Universe. This man can build it. He's so smart and popular that they had to give him a bodyguard, which made more sense. So other, you know, countries didn't kidnap him or Johnny or the rest of the boys. Hmm. Henceforth, the creation of Dynamite. You can give him a robotic heart. You can give him, you know, a couple of things. And, and maybe during the course of rehabilitating him, you know, make him stronger, faster, just like Max from the $6 million man, or more like the bionic woman, Max, the, the bionic dog. He makes him that way. And Benton's like, hey, well, I've added this, I've added that. And maybe during conversations while he's healing, Randall turns around and says, Mr. Quest, thank you for saving my dog, but I want to do more. I see this guy's out there. I, 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 you know, when I was younger, my parents put me in different activities to get me out of my shell. So they put me in sports and I was attracted into maybe boxing and sort of martial arts because I like the physicality of it. I want to do more. I think I could do more. And then maybe he goes on a mission before officially being Blue Falcon with Dino Mutt to get back whatever was stolen from Quest Industries, and he comes back and he's like, I found my purpose. I want to turn around and make sure what happened here tonight or what happened here maybe this month at your complex doesn't happen again. Police can do only so much. I think I can do more from behind the scenes, but I need an identity. Can you help me? Benton might mm -hmm. try to talk him out of it, but then turn around and look at him and say, got you. Because <laughs> Ray's Bannon, once again, is there. Ray's Bannon is a secret agent that works as a bodyguard that's there. And he could say, Hey, I got this. You know what? You're pretty good in hand to hand. Let me train you a little bit more. Okay. Dr. Quest, why don't you just kind of beef up Mutt? Yeah, yeah. We'll call him Dino Mutt. Okay. What's next? And then Race Bannon can put him in touch with the agency. And this is where he gets in with that guy who's the uh his commanding officer, the guy who reaches out to him all the time when he's in trouble. I can't remember what he's mm. called, um, uh, the name of that person. So this is where I'm envisioning the origin. Not done yet. Not done yet. Believe me, there's more. Okay. So now he's he reinvented himself. What is he gonna do? You know, then he goes on maybe his first unofficial case. Thefts in the art world. Oh, okay, what's going on? The police are knocking at my door. What's going on? R Randall Crown? Yeah. Have you heard from your uncle lately? My uncle? Uh, no. Why? Oh, all right. Man. We're looking for him. If you hear from your uncle, let us know who he is. If you hear from him, because um, we, we think he might be responsible for certain things. It's kind of, you know, and he's using your, your, your parents' name or maybe some of their finances to fund certain things. And it's kind of putting a black eye on your parents' legacy or their memory. And he doesn't like that. What's the uncle's name? Go and ask me what the uncle's name is, Rod. Uh, uh, who is the uncle that we're referring to? 
Thomas. Thomas Crown. Tie it into the Thomas Crown affair by the movie that had Pierce Bronson in it. Say Thomas Crown is the art thief that's related to Randall Crown's parents. Wow. Nice. Okay. 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 I see. I see you've been working. I see you've been working. Very nice. That's right. This is now how you tie in the art thing. So when he goes after his uncle to stop his uncle from doing what he's doing, you know, that could be a whole emotional play that tug on strings because that's family. But at the same time, he's doing wrong. And therefore, mm -hmm. he's like, wait a minute, what's happening in the art world? And he's realizing there's a lot of gossip going on in the art world. So he decides to open up a art museum to one, maybe be closer to a certain element of people, class of people that are stealing and, and and doing certain things because every bad guy seems to have a lair and in every lair you always want to steal the Mona Lisa. Okay, Blue Falcon and Dino to the rescue. Yeah. That's how I would put that whole origin in there. The whole thing of Dino 2.0, well, that mm -hmm. could be his evil rival that gets created later on. You know what I mean? He's got a uh, 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 his main car. villain is, you know, um, uh, the weasel, Willie the weasel, who is like a Mr. Hyde, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of thing, Willie the weasel, and that's one of his main villains. Okay, but we can't have another one like Dr. Like, you know, Thomas Crown. Think, mm. think of how the, the things spiral that way. Interesting, not okay. that I've given this a lot of thought. No, far from it. <laughs> no thought at all. Just on your lunch hour for the past three weeks. Got it. No problem. <laughs> so that, that, that's my theory. That's my theory. What are you thinking, Rod? What's your points? And how, how would you like to let's get down? What, what, I know you said you like the levity of the character. You know, yes. you understand some of the things uh, you caught, some things, you, you you know, and it, it was very piecemeal of one piece is here, one piece is there, one piece is there. But mm. your overall envision for this character, what, what would you see, so what? like to see? have seen well well it's clear that it's it's basically a, a a parody type of between batman like the levity is like you said it's not going to be as serious as batman mm -hmm. and the comic books batman and we know that originally this is from the 70s so we now you know it's being pulled off of the campy batman so i would like to have have him where it is you know in the center you have we know going in that Blue Falcon is he's there to he's he's a crime fighter he's there to fight crime, um, but he has particular ways, he has particular uh, advantages that you no know, a, a um a crime fighter of that time wouldn't have. Again, Batman always using his wits, whatever the case to be. This is a gentleman who has his wits and he has his own version of you know the the peekaboo box. Anything that he needs most likely is close within that range. Dynamite, I need this. I need to do that. Can you see over here? Head over, you know, and give me, give me a give me a scope of what, you know, how far, how far the intruders are. Can you see for you know x-ray vision, that type of scenario? So I wanted I wanted to pull from that type of levity. That's mm -hmm. where I would have liked to see it. So I I want to see the 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 I'm trying not to say that the, the comical side of it. But I want to see the levity that is, is that there's still there's so you can have some. It's not saying we're doing this have fun, where he's fighting crime, but to show that not everything is hundred percent serious. That you know they are there are going to be some humor, because that's what that's the character that is that is already known to her because yes. of the yin and yang and original. So I want to be able to play off of that. I want to make sure that we have something that you can say. You find out his. His whole um, his origin, like you said, is he was an introvert in that sense. You know, he he basically was a type of you know child coming up. You know, at that time, he was not looking for the adventurous type. His parents put him into we need to you know the break you know Randall out of his shell. We got to make him you know you know be able to you know stand tough for the world. But Randall just didn't see it. He just didn't, he didn't, you know, gravitate to it. You know, we're going to give him, you know, he needs a friend. He doesn't have a play friend or no one, you know, to associate at school. He has no friends or anything along that line. Again, this is where you bring, bring the dog in. You bring in Mutt 
or Reggie, depending on which which avenue that you're going to, which version are you going to say? Yes. He has it. He has his uh, animal. He has his pet who is his confidant. He, you know, his security blanket, as you said, who basically gives him the assurance that I, I can I can do something. I have I have someone who believes in me and that I can look after. So off of that type of liberty, I want I want to see something along on it, and you grow from there, and then you can see that he was in that particular pocket of mindset from his teens, his early teens, to he was in his late twenties type of scenario. Always you know just a a good boy who just you know towed a line and did whatever, but then something happened that triggered it. Something happened where he you know. There was a situation, like I said, a traumatic situation, an issue, and it took it took his friend. It took his best friend. And now yep. he was just distraught. And luckily enough, what it happened, we're now pulling in the stories of Dr. Quest, pulling it in, and we started to weave that storyline in there and basically gave him the ability to say, okay, I want to be, I, I want to, can you save my best friend? I have the technologies. I have a specific set of skills. I can help him. And then uh, Rudy, sorry, Dr. Quest rebuilds him and just. <laughs> like Rudy, I mean, Dr. Quest. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. Dr. Quest rebuilds him. <laughs> exactly. And see, and the reason why I said, and, and for the levity part of it, instead of making it, oh, well, you know, Dynamite never gets it wrong, he has glitches. Keep in mind, he's a dog with a robotic body with a lot of moving parts to it, right? So <laughs> he's going to have a glitch. You have a dog. Dogs are smart. But once again, you're trying to make sure that your leg doesn't shoot out. You know, a dog a dog gets overexcited and loses all control when it sees somebody, right? When they're young puppies. So you I'm have sure. a dog that's now trying to cope with a brand new body. It's going to have glitches. It's going to say, oh, yeah, do this. And then maybe something else will happen because of a nervous, you know, not a nervous twitch, but it just does the wrong thing. And that's where right. your moments of levity come in. Right, because the time that you'll have the dog, okay, you know what, maybe how long could a dog, you know, the, the lifespan of a dog, but easy, like, you know what, it made a good what, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm thinking as you're saying that is that, okay, dog's been, you know, in his normal dog form for all the majority of his life. Now he has these new, you know, these new sensations, these new things and quest now saying, yeah, I can save him. I have this technology, whatever the case may be. But it had been created on a smaller scale, something small and testing. So this is one of his first time doing on a larger subject. Yes. So even Quest is not completely believing in his technology. Well, we did it on a hamster. We did it on a gerbil. You know, we did something on a rabbit. So we're good. So, you know, it should work on a full size Great Dane dog. Right. We should be good. Not realizing that nah, all those were nice, you know, you know, all, all nice ratios for a smaller breed of animal. And now you have a larger breed of animal. Uh, you didn't take an account X, Y, Z, and you now come across what we now come to affectionately love, the dynamite glitches. Exactly, right? It, like it's, he, he's, he's, a, he's a beta project. He's, he's, it's all experimental. So, right. and, that, and, and that's exactly what you have to establish because you're always going to say, well, if he's just a dog, you know, some people might say, well, I mean, for dog lovers, dog lovers go, you know, Right. But anyone is not a dog lover is like, oh, he's more of a machine. Why not get rid of him? No, that's his best friend. It's right. to the point where Dynamite refers to him, to Blue Falcon as BF. But in, and what I liked in the Super Suns special with Dynamite and Blue Falcon is mm -hmm. it says BF. But BF, as we've been hearing, we always think and assume BF stands for Blue Falcon. Blue Falcon. No, BF stands for best friend. So even mm -hmm. Dynamite refers to Blue Falcon BF. As best friend, not Blue Falcon. That's why he says BF all the time. Hey, BF, how you doing? Hey, best friend, how you doing? If you put those two words in there, it goes. That shows the connection, the bond. This is why he would never get rid of Dynamite. So the whole storyline that happened with Dexter would have to play it a little bit differently with you know Dynamite 2.0. It, it couldn't be to replace Dynamite because it, you know Blue Falcon wouldn't do that. It's out of character, right? I want to keep things within the character and the context. But that's where you get mm -hmm. your humor. So I'm not getting rid of the humor. You're going to have those glitches. Now, this goes more into my story. So Blue Falcon, young hero, so to speak. And when I say young, you know, he's young with Dynamite. They have their set of adventures. They have their, their, their villains they deal with, the rogues gallery to go on. Now we know because of the Scoob movie, if we have to put that in there, at one point there is a love interest, there is a relationship, and there is a family, and Blue Falcon has a kid. 
who carries on the mantle of the Blue Falcon. Now, in that movie, it was voiced, uh, Blue Falcon, it was voiced by Mark Wahlberg. So you find out, you know, let's call him Blue Falcon Jr. Dino mm-hmm. is still around. BF, the original Blue Falcon, has retired. But he was so good, he almost wiped out crime in all in the big city. So there was hardly any crime left. So his son went, upgraded the costume, upgraded the Falcon Flyer to make it more like a plane, you know, made it more uh, grandiose, like what maybe Booster Gold and and Blue Beetle would do at times, right? Try to really market right. himself as a hero, like almost a reality star than being a true hero. So, you know, that's going to cause things from the father saying, well, you know, I did the character a certain way. Well, dad, I'm doing it this way. All right, I got to love you, my son. All right, cool. Which opens the question to one, who's mom? Because hmm. in the Blue Falcon series, we never see a love interest per se that was consistent. It's not like you have your Lois Lane, your Vicky Vales. It, it, you know what I mean? We don't see it's not your Mary J. Parker. It's not Jean Grey. So we don't know. Once right. again, that's great interpretation. That's something that's totally open to bring in a love interest for Blue Falcon to show him at the beginning. Because we know they stay within the timeline. He will have a kid. His kid will grow up right. and become the new Blue Falcon. And then right. guess what? Things change. Because in the Scoob movie, Dynamite is now fully in control of his body, hundred mm. percent. So he he didn't he doesn't make the goofy mistakes that he did when he was younger. He learned, he evolved, he stole there. And in honor of his best friend, he's going to make sure his son is safe while he pursues the family legacy. Right? It's now the new Blue Falcon Junior where the humor comes in. Because he is inexperienced. It's like Blue Falcon year one or Blue Falcon, sorry, Blue Falcon Jr. year one or two. He hasn't matured enough, but he wants to do it to impress his dad. But he's still a little bit, you know, rough around the edges, maybe a little bit afraid at times. And that's where the levity comes in. So it came in from Blue Falcon original dad being serious and Dynamite being the, you know, getting the laughs. But now when his son gets older, his son is the goof. And Dynamite is dun, 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 the straight hero because he finally learned to control his body 100%. Right. See, that's that's what I love. Right? That's my whole yeah. that's my whole thing. That's that's how I like to see this character done and come back. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. That's, that's so how would like you like to see that though? Else. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can see that. So how would you like to see this? Like, what type of format, what type of medium would you like to see this on? Ooh. Oh, now, now we're talking, my friend. I, I say, look, so here it is. I have the same actor picked up no matter what medium I'm going in. Hmm. And uh, if we had to get back to, uh, and I want to get back to basics. So I want to go with the original Blue Falcon with the door open that will eventually lead to him having a family. We, I don't want to retcon it to the point where he doesn't have a son and take away that character from Scoob. I, I like that, that character. I like the, the update of the Falcon Flyer, all that. I, I like it all. You know, some aspects of maybe a little bit over the top, but it's, it's a cartoon. So I would say, no matter what, um, how would I like to see it? You know what? I, I would like to see, I think, give me a movie. Give me a live action movie. I'm always with this, right? I'm all, I love, the, you know, give me a live action movie into uh, a nice Netflix series that would go on for a couple of seasons. Really get into more depth for the characters because they're there. So a live action movie. And if I'm going live action movie and voice actor, so they're the same person for me, I am going with Ian Zering. Uh, Zering, there you go. Ian, Ian Zering. So he was on Beverly Hills 90210 as Steve. He's also the voice of one of the biker mice from Mars, the leader of the biker mice from Mars. He's done some other voiceover work too. He was in Sharknado. If you look at Steve right now, Steve is six foot. <laughs> Steve can play a, a little bit, maybe even he can, they can do a flashback origin and do a story where it kind of leads into, catch him maybe more near the end of his career uh, as Blue Falcons. And what I mean by that is, well, give me a flashback origin you know, talk about some of the things, maybe how, and, and this way you can introduce like, you know, uh, Johnny Quest and that whole crew into a live genre atmosphere to open okay. the door for them to be played by, have their own live action uh, series or movie, which I think would do really well. Then 
you know, say, hey, we've had all these adventures. Here's our last hurrah, our last mission, or second to last, or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be the last, but make it up. Because Aaron Zering, he's he's 59 right now, but he's six, he's six foot. He's got the mm-hmm. physique, right? He's got the voice, he's got the body, he's got the chin. He can definitely play Blue Falcon, but he doesn't have to play Blue Falcon at the beginning. Let it be Blue Falcon wrapping up. And at this point saying, hey, I got to do this and lead into him, you know, maybe being in a serious relationship, but about ready to take it to the next level. Or saying, hey, um, I'm, I, I got married. I got to slow down right now. You know, we got to just wrap these couple of last missions up, you know, you know, our last couple of criminals up because my wife who is ex is is pregnant i just found out the news i can't keep doing this forever i want to be a family man you know give him a proper okay. send off but open to the fact that you know he will have a son who will take it on okay. mental and who is to say that he only had one kid okay right who is to say he only had one kid so it could either be that or do it in point in his career where his kids already born but his kids younger but the family knows and he's got to kind of bring it back in. so that's what i'd go i would go with uh ian to do to play blue falcon right but okay. not in a campy way and do the voice for the character for an animated series if you want to fill in more of the blanks of the blue falcon and dino mutt but show the transition okay. that's going to start from season one that sometimes there'll be some goofiness and then let the goofiness come in with him having a family and his son you know who we know is going to follow in his footsteps come in there and there there's where the levity comes in <laughs> Mm. You know, okay. it's Blue Falcon and Sparrow. I don't know. Blue Falcon and, and Blue Jay. Okay. With Dynamite. It, it, if it's going to be a Batman character, he can he can span into his own little universe. But the beauty of it is, he can have meetings saying, oh yeah, we have to have a, a meeting with, you know, the, the society. Who's the society, Dad? Don't worry about it. And then, so, you know, you see, for example, Benton Quest come in and you see Birdman walk in and, you know, Space Ghost shows up on the monitor. <laughs> it could be anything. But. Nah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. I can see. I can see in. I can see in. So, where I was going, similar, literally, we, we're, we're talking similar type of conversation. Like, if they decided to go you know any medium i want to have the same person what i really wanted to be live but i <laughs> wanted to have it a mix and i wanted to kind of like well they still do it now but i I'm, my mind set is like i have to see the medium to see how it's actually drawn out and i'm saying it this way live action for blue falcon for dynamite i want it to be it's the, the Lord of the Rings, you know, the, um, you know, have the 3D animated. Oh, the cartoon the, one, the, the Lord of the Ring cartoon. No, not the cartoon one. No, no, no. I, I want to want to have live, but I want to have live. But this is this is where I don't want to go that far back to make it look like that. So I'm thinking mm-hmm. something where you can have an updated version of, you can tell that they're still cartoonish, like Roger Rabbit kind of scenario, but oh. give it a little bit more, you know, the coloring will make it a more, okay, okay. more, more, you know, more realistic. But yeah. you know that it is a cartoon. But if I if I wanted to go that route, if not, then I'm doing the golem type of Lord of the Rings, you know, the, the CG animated to that. Because right. for me, Dynamite has to have all that ability. Like we know what he's capable of doing. So we gotta have we have to be able to give that that aspect of the IP carte blanche, because we're gonna expect the 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 inspector gadget type of stuff to happen. Yes. And it's not campy, not campy, but in the sense when they did, when uh, Matthew Broderick did, you know, inspector gadget, you know, they're limited to a certain amount of things, but you mm-hmm. know, Dino might is supposed to have that type of thing. So I'm just saying all that to set up who I wanted to be my blue Falcon. I wanted Channing Tatum. Wow. I wanted Channing Tatum. Now I wanted him because well enough, you're talking about the six foot and this man six foot as well. So that was cute. I'll keep that as well. Pause. But I wanted him because I wanted to have the transition of him being serious. Now he's not dark and serious like the Dark Knight. Right. And he's not like the Adam with. But you know Chatham can play that from being on G.I. Joe, from playing on um um playing uh, I just had it in my head, sorry. Uh Kingsman having yes. at least from that aspect as well. So those are right to there as well. 
but then you know he has the comical chops to to be a little funny and be a little you know you know there's some levity in there as well so i know chatham mm -hmm. be able to pull that off you know 21 jump street type of scenario you know right, what i mean okay. so the levity to be a little not straight in your face comedy but has a bill to put in some to make it like okay that was kind of funny because if you're going to be working off of uh dynamite mm -hmm. we know he has a straight face kind of scenario but yes. we know that the realistic aspect of it i would want to at least to have a couple of levities like <laughs> you know the head shaking like oh yep, yep. Okay, okay okay all right okay let me let me figure this out let me figure this out you messed up i'm gonna figure this out we're gonna get back on track try to be more careful next time thank you okay well, let's get back in the game so because yeah. of the, the type of character dynamite is do I, I I want it to be a realistic dog as possible? Yes, but I still want the the visual lore to be you can still kind of like, okay, we know we're doing this is a cartoon, this is an animated character type of scenario mm -hmm. in real life, the possibility. So that's why I, that's why I kind of lean back to our reference back to uh Roger Rabbit. Because we knew everybody knew it was the two worlds intertwining together. That was set up for that particular world. This world yeah. is, you know, it's all real life but us as the viewers will know that okay we're having a little we're having some fun here because the amount of stuff that you want to be done it may look a little bit as much as you want the reality the realism of the animal the dog to be as real as possible the amount yeah. of stuff that dynamite is supposed to do that it's might true. be a little bit ooh, that's a little bit either too real is like ooh. Like his head will come off, and you know, yeah, like you know what? At least if you see it in the in the lore, in the haze of being a little animated, cartoonish, whatever happens, it'd be like, okay, I can see that, and you can walk away. You won't feel like you're traumatizing any people, thinking like, Mama, will will little will little poo poo be a uh, little little doggy be doing the same thing? No, no, don't worry, the dog doesn't have that ability. And now you, everybody traumatized watching the dog. You better not pop your head like like dynamite. No, can't have that. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know what? Uh, I, I like it. I, I honestly like it because I know, and I can't remember the name of the movie, but Channing Tatum did a movie where he was, I, I guess, had to go and get a dog that was overseas and had PTSDs in the army. And he had to take this dog from one army base to another place. And the dog was... dog. Yeah, dog. No? Okay, there we go. Duh. Dog. All right. dog. Yeah, dog. okay. So this is not going to be his first foray. And I think, is he, and for Ian... Ian was in Sharknado, so he can handle right. some of that campiness. Oh, hell yeah. Top stuff. It, oh, yeah. I, I think it's, you know, those are good picks, man. That's a good pick, though. I, Chad and Tatum, okay, I'm, I'm down with your pick, man. I like that. I like that a lot. Sweet. Uh, it's, it's good. Like I said, you, we, we both have people that we know can balance the line of being serious and still put in a little humor in there. That, you know, the levity that be like thinking Sharknado, like, like, come on, like, for how many Sharknados that there have been, and Ian is still running this, like, listen, hats off to you that you can still pull this off to make it, like... Of course. I mean, he's not okay, Sharknado. He's got, the, you know, Beverly Hills 90210 where he was the rich boy 100%. with his Corvette all the time that he he loved 100%. to drive. Okay, okay. so he, he can play a lot of these roles, I, I and I think he's got it. I, I, you know, and he's done, like I said, Biker Mice from Mars, where he was playing a serious version of this Biker Mice from Mars character, but, you know... He, He's got it. They, these are two characters. These are two actors that would definitely make this role shine live and voiceover work. 100%. Sweet. California. <laughs> mm. Not that I move anytime soon, but got it. Yeah. On that note, then here we go. Uh, we're going to wrap this episode up. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Ron, any last words on Blue Falcon and Dino Mods? Uh, <laughs> Dino Mods, Blue Falcon. Listen, everyone, I hope you guys got some good tidbits, heard some nice information on it. And uh, if for those who may remember it, I hope we were able to, you know, hit a little nostalgia button and made you think about it. It's um, Blue Falcon. He's a he's a character that we we all, as you can tell, we we like and we love, and we realize that you know can be. We always say certain characters, you know, why not bring them back? Why not bring them back? Blue Falcon can fit very well, 
and you know I'm I believe there will be you know there will be a, a a niche of a nostalgic people who will be like saying, oh my gosh, someone's digging deep into uh, uh digging deep into the lore of Blue Falcon and bringing it back to light. Let's have a conversation. I think we could work with this. Heck Simple yeah. Put. Simple but Heck yeah. I mean, and, and as you said before, go to your local comic book store, get those back issues, 12 issues, or maybe there's a, a one shot you can buy of Future Quest, right? That brings in all those characters that we're talking about and we'll talk about or have talked about, and you can't go wrong. And you know the two book stores that we're talking about. So that's WoW or Check Swings or wherever you get your comic books from. And then send us a picture of that. We want to see that. So as always, like, subscribe, share, Rate and review. We want more people to join up on our pages, regardless of if it's our, our, our Podbean page or our YouTube page. Let us know. And we have things in the community tab where we're trying to communicate and add some more fun there for anyone that's coming by to browse. And please, sign up. Turn your notifications on. All right. On that note, this whole world was created hmm. by a pencil, a piece of paper, and lots of imagination. Keep on dreaming. Oh.